Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! We will be. There's a hardy perennial of the radio phone in the news today. I don't know if you've noticed. Kids who don't compete anymore on sports days. It's genuinely one of my favourite conversational subjects. Find out why from about 12. At 11 o'clock, a prevailing wind allowing, I'm wading into one of the most historically difficult conversations that we ever have with each other. It involves a, a tweet that's been issued from the, pres from the office of the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, which, well, when I read it to you, I don't think you'll believe me. Actually, I, I genuinely don't. And given that it is reportedly very difficult these days to criticise the Prime Minister of Israel or indeed the government of Israel without falling into the um, uh, uh, pits of Jeremy Corbyn anti-Semitism allegations, um, I'm going to probably need someone to hold my hand during that hour. But if we don't talk about this stuff, nobody else will. Which means we begin in the shallow end of the political pool. Um, do you remember... I, I, stuff sometimes happens on the programme that doesn't really register with me until a, until a bit later. Sometimes a couple of days later, sometimes even a couple of weeks later. And when we were having great fun uh, about three weeks ago during Donald Trump's visit to London, just before it, when we were wondering why anyone would get so aerated about the balloon of him, a bright orange balloon depicting Donald Trump as a, as a, nap, as a nappy-wearing... Um, uh, orange blimp, and I, I found it funny. I apologise in a sense for finding it funny, because I'm, I'm 46. I should really be above that sort of thing, but I, I think a childish sense of humour can be a great leveller. And I, I thought we'd do probably 20 minutes on it, or, or, or something like that. We did two hours on it. We just could not stop taking calls from people who were livid and genuinely furious. And as is often my want on days like that, I was desperately trying to understand why. Why is everyone so furious? It, 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 was, it was a bit like the early days of Brexit, actually. Because, I, unfortunately, those sort of people don't ring me as much as they used to do. I can't think why. So it was that... Almost that the, the spluttering certainty that would fall apart at the slightest tug. And one of the things that they were most certain about was the fact that if, if a, a lefty or um, one of their bete noirs, such as Sadiq Khan himself, the mayor of London, if they were depicted in a comical balloon, insisted... And you'll remember, if you weren't listening, trust me on this one, I'm not exaggerating. Seriously, I'll play you a couple of reminders imminently, but it was, it was unbelievable, actually, the sort of Pandora's box of bonkersness that we opened that day. One of the things they were most adamant about was the claim that if, if, it was a, if it was a balloon depicting somebody that, that anti-racists like, then we'd all go furious. We'd all go absolutely nuts. We'd be absolutely livid. And, and I wasn't sure, because you, can you can't be, can you? None of us have crystal balls. And I, I was fairly confident that, that nobody would be. I thought if they, they then the sort of crowdfunding started and, and somebody was suggesting that he was going to spend tens of thousands of pounds on a balloon depicting Sadiq Khan in a yellow bikini. And, and I sort of thought, well, I, 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 I don't think anybody is going to get cross about that, least of all the mayor of London himself. I mean, it's just not very funny. I, the, the Trump gag worked because he is notoriously thin-skinned and the idea of mocking him 30 feet in the air above Parliament Square would, would be um, a, a little bit delicious. The thinner the skin, the more impactful the mockery, right? And also, the more accurate the depiction. So the idea that Donald Trump needs to wear a nappy is obviously built upon the perception that he's incredibly childlike as opposed to childish and, and, and a sort of tantrum-throwing toddler, which is quite close to the truth, clearly. Except for people who, who feel validated by his mainstreaming of, of racist bile, who, of course, won't brook any criticism at all of the great big orange baby. So I, I didn't know, though, because you can't be sure, can you? You, you, you can't... Um, you can't know for certain. So I, I, I watched with interest yesterday. I don't think we mentioned it on the show. I was keeping a, a very much a watching brief because I, I wanted to see whether or not people were going to actually get upset about it, whether or not people who I suppose... I, and I'll talk to you about sides in a minute because there was another call that day that was actually deeply troubling in retrospect. But people on, on the sort of other side of 
racial politics to Donald Trump. We'll, we'll, and I'll, I'll use we for that, I, no secret of my attitude towards um, those sort of bigotries, particularly when, when directed at Muslims, which of course Sadiq Khan is. People on the other side would get cross about it. And I, I wasn't sure. I was 99% sure that it, it I mean, it, it would be neither funny nor particularly upsetting. But you don't know, do you? You know, the, the, the so-called snowflake generation. Maybe they would get up in arms about the depiction of Sadiq Khan in a, as an inflatable man in a yellow bikini. It, it, it's a bit like phoning someone up four weeks after they've humiliated you in public and saying, yeah, I, yeah, I know, I, I know you are, but what am I? That's what this balloon is from where I'm sitting. You know, a month after someone's had their pants pulled down in public, they, uh, they ring you up and say, I know you are, but what am I? And then they go, ha ha, owned, burn, hashtag winner, or whatever the phrase of, of the day may be. So, so that's simple truth. Then a, a little bit of social media um, dabbling this morning raised the delightful prospect of people saying, no, actually they are all furious, they're just not admitting it. One bloke tweeted me to say, secretly Sadiq Khan will be seething. And, and you sort of think that really is, I know you are, but what am I? So I don't know if anyone who was furious about it at the time will, will ring me today. So I'll remind you instead of a, of a couple of people who rang me at the time. I'd love you to get back in touch, especially the fellow with his dwone. Remember the guy that was going to fly his dwone into the balloon because he was so cross? Actually, we might have a little listen to that in a minute. The, 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 if you would call me and tell me why you think no one's cross about the Sadiq Khan balloon, because you told me that everybody would be. If, if no one's minded to do that, if, if you can't actually work out why you spat your dummy out, insisted that everybody else would spit their dummies out if the roles were reversed, and now that all dummies remain firmly in gob, you're, you, you don't know why that has happened, then join me on the sort of other side of the argument, which is trying to work out why. Why would people, and we'll loosely describe them as um, people who aren't Islamophobic um, or aren't racist, or try not to be, at least, why aren't they upset about the Sadiq Khan balloon in the way that all the racist people who love Donald Trump said that they would be. I'd like your help in, in mapping that psychological conundrum today. And, and I know I sound a little bit tongue-in-cheek, and I am a little bit tongue-in-cheek, because we're talking about balloons. It's funny, potentially. But, but there's a really serious question here, and it came up when I was talking to somebody again on that day um, called Brendan who said something remarkable to me towards the end of that conversation, which was that, well, you're on the same side as Sadiq Khan and Brendan Cox, of all people, the, the widower, of course, of the MP Joe Cox, who was murdered by a white supremacist terrorist, subsequently stepped down from the charities that he founded in her name after allegations of sexual misconduct. So I, I, it took me, it was a bit afterwards, it was while I was finishing off my book, actually, that I found myself thinking about that call, because I thought, what the hell does he mean? And this is where I think the story of the two balloons gets a little bit more serious. Because what do people like that mean when they say you, you're on the side? So Donald Trump is on one side, and a man whose wife was murdered by a white supremacist is on the other side. What battle line was being drawn by that fella that day? do you think? And, and how could a, a, a British mayor, a mildly left-wing, he's, he's, he's not um, what you'd call a, a, a Corbynite in his policy, Sadiq Khan, by any stretch of the imagination. So it's unlikely to be his politics that somebody like Brendan sees as distinguishing him from Donald Trump. So what are you left with except his ethnicity? You're on the same side as the widower of a murdered MP, murdered by a white supremacist terrorist, and a brown man. And if that, I, maybe I misunderstood the fella. I, maybe he'll ring me today and explain, again, what it is I've got wrong. But that's pretty, that's pretty serious, isn't it? Um, OK, so let's get the phone lines open. And um, you could give me a call and tell me why you think the predictions of massive, massive tantrums being thrown by libtards and lefties if, if anybody ever dared to do a balloon of Sadiq Khan, just haven't happened. Why is that? Genuine question. Why? Uh, and, and if you were certain that there would be uh, tantrums and outrage, 
Well, take a moment now. Let's not fall out. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that, you know, you got it so wrong. But why do you think you did get... How, I mean, who, were you, who are you going to blame for you looking so silly now? You can't really blame Sadiq Khan because they've done the flipping balloon. Um, what? What's the explanation? 03456060973 is the number that you need. Um, have I got time? I haven't, have I? I'll, play, I'll, I'll remind you of a couple of the calls that we took at the time uh, after the first break. But it's, it's getting inside the psychology, if you like, here that, that intrigues me the most. It often does. It's, it's, I, some people say you're wasting your time, but I, I honestly think it's the most important question facing us at the moment. I heard a Nazi on the BBC this morning complaining that, that because some people in the crowd at a protest in Germany were giving Nazi salutes, she was complaining that, that was, it was completely unfair to conclude that the whole crowd was full of Nazis just because some people in the crowd were giving Nazi salutes. But the crowd was essentially complaining that one... Um, criminal who happened to be an immigrant was representative of every foreigner in Germany. So it was, it was a beautiful piece of hypocrisy. It didn't get picked up quite as quickly as it should have been. But that, that is how the far right operate. They say, oh no, you, how dare you call us all Nazis just because some people in this crowd were giving Nazi salutes. What's the crowd doing? The crowd is complaining about one crime committed by an immigrant because it proves that all immigrants are criminals. But, but, you, but you, you, you see what you just did there, Nazi, don't you? So that's why I think it's important to have these conversations, because this is a sort of entry level. You're on the same side as Brendan Cox and Sadiq Khan, and, and that's someone who's emboldened enough to say it live on national radio. So where does it lead? And why, when you realise that you're wrong, like today, and you go, oh, they haven't all gone tonto about it, they are a lot more measured and um, less prone to offence than we are, well, well, why don't pennies drop? I'll take anything you've got on this, because I find it enduringly fascinating. But do remember that, that, I mean, it's funny on one level, but on another level, it's deadly serious. It speaks of really deep divisions and fractures in our society. An elected mayor, the very epitome of, of, a, of a democratic mandate. A lot of people claim they think that Muslim people should integrate more into British society. You can't get more integrated than being elected mayor. And yet it's precisely the same sort of people who, who say that they want more integration who seem to have the biggest problem with the ethnicity and religion of this particular mayor. So riddle me that. We're, we're just wondering what happened to all the spluttering outrage that was supposed to accompany the hoisting of a, of a blimp featuring Sadiq Khan above London. Do you know why he's in a yellow bikini? I'll explain to you. But first, let me, let me remind you of what was the, fella, the drone fella first, please. This is, this is Jazz in Crawley. Jazz is in Crawley. Jazz, why are you frightened of a balloon? I ain't frightened of no balloon. I just think it's absolutely pathetic. And cowards like you ain't even going to turn up to this Donald Trump rally or anything. You're just going to be sat there having a go at the radio and... Uh, having a go at the radio? I'm on, I'm on the radio. Well, you're shouting at the mic and, uh, you know, it's coming out through my speaker. I can't see you, that's, you know. That's, that's, uh, that is day, how it I'm works. I'm not really yeah. interested about your balloon. I'm going to get my drone out and fly it right into it. What day? Because I think it's a bit disgusting. What, really. what day, Jazz? go. Sorry? What day are you going to do it? I don't know. Whenever the day, uh, whenever the balloon goes up. What, you don't know when it is? No, I've got no idea. So mate. you're cross about a balloon going up on a day you don't know? I'm not cross about You sound quite cross, Jack. I just think it's really pathetic. Why? Why? It's good to mock politicians, isn't it? Um, no. No? Really. You don't think any politician should be mocked? Well, let's just... What about mocking disabled journalists? Where do you stand on that? Um, where do you stand on fake news, James? Well, I'm you know, passionately you opposed to it, Jack, but you can't answer a question news. with a question. I, I'm, I'm amused that... I can't do it. Go I can't on. do it. I can't answer fake, qu uh, fake questions with fake answers. Sorry, mate. Well, it's, it's, it's not a fake question. How do you feel about mocking disabled journalists? Fake news. Well, we've seen the pictures, Jack. Oh, fake news. So the pictures are fake? Fake news. How do Sorry, you feel mate. about mocking the families of Gold Star families? Gold star families. Again, fake news. Okay, but you've seen, you've seen it on your screen, Jazz. I've seen it, mate. How do you know that the, how do you know the Donald Trump, 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 how do you know the Donald Trump balloon isn't fake news? Why have you chosen to believe this? Well, you're, you're going nuts about it, and you know why... Mate, I, um, I think it's funny. I'm not going nuts about it. I'm giggling. But are you going to turn up? To what? Are you going to turn up to this, uh... 
Yeah, I mind, do I mind not? I don't need to, do I? I'll be able to see it from the office window. But let, let's just focus on, yeah. on why you... Have you phoned me before? This is the first time you ever phoned me is about a giant balloon. I just want to know why. Because it's pathetic, James. Well, you keep and saying I it's pathetic, really but it's also cannot. funny. I mean, lots of things are pathetic. I really cannot understand why you just keep attacking Donald Trump. You, you can't. Yeah. I mean, James... Well, we, just, just, we know no, why you can't no, understand, Jazz, because you describe all the facts behind reasons to attack Donald Trump as fake fact, news, so you can understand yeah. why. Come on, Jazz, yeah. no one's that stupid. You if, you, if you describe the evidence of your own eyes as fake news, then you can understand why people keep attacking him. It's, it's, not, it's not difficult to grasp, but if you describe facts as lies, then you've chosen not to understand why. I, I can't really help you any more than that. I'm interested in your attitude to the balloon. Real fact. Give me some real facts. I mate, just, I just have. Talk about that. I just you have. He mocks disabled journalists. He boasts news. about sexually assaulting women. He's a multiple bankrupt. Fake he news. mocked the families of fake a gold news. star general. He intro fake uh, news. Fake news. But the balloon fake is news. real. Let's try some real. But, but the news, balloon James. is real. What did you say about the balloon is real? First, executive order. But I have. Fine. I have. Human sex trafficking. Balloon, balloon, say, balloon yeah. makes me cross. Uh, yeah. I hate balloons. It doesn't make me cross. I'm going I to take my drone. I'm going to take my drone there and shoot it down. Oh, Jazzy, Jazzy, baby. Sad for you. Yeah, well, I'm very glad you feel I sad for me. I feel real sad I've, for you. Oh, you know, you're I know. You're good, intelligent man. With your drone and your fake news. With your drone. With your drone and your fake news. What sort of drone have you got? What sort of drone have you got? What sort of drone have you got? Oh, Jazz. Don't worry about my drone, mate. You just no, I just I want to know. I want to make sure it's big enough to burst the great big horrible balloon. So, what sort of drone have you got? Oh, mine's got lasers. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it's got. Okay. It really well, I'll, I'll look out so for you. Okay. I'll look out for you on the day as you make a great assault upon freedom with your toy helicopter. So. That was just one example of the um, responses to the suggestion that the Donald Trump balloon might fly. Um, Jazz was going to get his drone and go and shoot it down because it was all so pathetic and, and shameful. He didn't in, in the event. We rang him up that morning. He declined to come on the show. And Brendan in Portsmouth. And this is where the bit about Brendan Cox and Sadiq Khan came in that I found really, really weird. So why do you support Sadiq Khan? Why do you support Brendan Cox? Uh, I, people I, have done things equally as wrong, but you have them in the studio, don't you? I have condemned Brendan Cox for his allegations of sexual assault. I dedicated an entire hour of the programme to it. What are you accusing Sadiq Khan of, done, of doing? After about, well, knife crimes off the scale in London, James. It's, it's off the scale in every city in the country. I condemn, I condemn Brendan. What, what, what exactly has Sadiq Khan done that you're accusing him of? Well, I think the Mayor of London isn't doing a very good job of reducing um, knife crime. So do I. I think it's higher than it's ever been so, before. So do I. Well, it's, it's pretty poor. So do I. But what are you accusing mm. him of? Of doing a pretty poor job, James. That's what I just said. So that was fascinating. Um, Brendan rang in uh, with the suggestion that if I was inviting my new father-in-law round to my house, I wouldn't put a comedy balloon of him up in the sitting room. Um, at, at which point I kind of tried to establish whether or not my putative father-in-law was a self-confessed sex offender. Um, <laughs> and, of course, if he was, I wouldn't have let him into my house in the first place. But, but, but Brendan struggled with that and instead reached for that remarkable line that's really resonated and stayed with me. This notion that on one side of, a, of, a, of an imaginary fence or a rhetorical fence sits Donald Trump, the man who thinks there were, you know, fine people on both sides when Nazis and anti-Nazis were on the streets of Charlottesville. And on the other side of this rhetorical fence, you've got Sadiq Khan and Brendan Cox, the widower of a woman murdered by a white supremacist. So that's why I'm confused today. Because so certain were these people that the Sadiq Khan balloon would prompt epic wailing and gnashing of teeth. And so certain is it now that it hasn't. I really, really, really want to understand what goes on in their little heads. 03456060973. Alex is in Hornchurch. Alex, what can you tell us? Um, for a start, I have a drone. They're expensive. No one's going to fly their drone into a balloon. <laughs> so, Are you suggesting that Jazz was indulging in fake news himself, Alex? Well, well I don't know. Maybe he's a cheapskate and had a really cheap one, but that wouldn't have done anything. But now going back to these balloons, I think both of them are a bit silly. But Fair you know, the original... Um, question was why are people not coming out and complaining? Well the prediction will, and this is where you can't ever prove people wrong until it's happened, you know I mean, imagine how much the fury they'd be, just imagine how the snowflakes would react and the lefties if someone did a balloon of, of Sadiq yeah. on and you sit there thinking, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't 
but now we know that they haven't. They might be a bit smarter thinking. It's like, I don't know, if they were to say, they won't, they won't want to say anything because they don't want to prove the ones that said they would say anything <laughs> right. So even though they, because I'm sure they, but I think it's actually Can backfired. You, do you it's think anyone is genuinely upset by this balloon? Do you think anyone has looked at it and well, gone, no, that's no, outrageous, upset, that's I disgusting, think. I'm getting my drone, I'm going to blow it out of the sky? I think anything, it's a waste of money, because everyone's complaining about there's no money. A lot of money, it. actually. It, it's it's backed but by it because I think what it will do, it will strengthen the people that support Sadiq Khan in everything that he does to show, oh, look what they're doing now. This is highly offensive, making a, putting a, uh, a man with a but yellow it, But it's not highly offensive. No, I know, but the thing is, though, James... No, nobody it's thinks it's offensive. No, well... There's always well, the phone lines are open, so that's the other thing we should have asked. I mean, genuinely, someone who thinks this is offensive, 0345. In fact, that's probably what we need first, isn't it? 0345 606 0973. When the Trump balloon was in the sky, I could have literally taken call up right for a week. You were, you were probably listening. You listen every day. And, and on this one, at the moment, I don't think we've got what well, I have. I've only just asked. So someone who is genuinely offended by the Sadiq Khan balloon in the way that people were genuinely outraged and offended by the Donald Trump one, 0345 606 0973, because I don't think anybody body is, Alex? No. But I, 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 no, they're not. No one cares. I think what everyone's saying is, what a waste of money. And this is just tit for tat. Because one side have done one thing, the other side want to do another thing. And it's, it's like what happens with my daughters at school in the playground. It is, isn't it? It's really, it is embarrassing, to be honest. It, it, what if it had been the other way round? If the Sadiq, no, because I don't think people see it as, as sides, do they? People, I mean, normal Londoners aren't, aren't thinking that Donald Trump and Sadiq Khan are sort of like two boxers in the same ring. They're, they're thinking one's the president of America and he's a bit weird and one's the mayor of London and, you know, you can like him or dislike him. It's British politics in its, in its knockabout traditional way. But people on the Trump side see... That's why that line about being with Brendan Cox and Sadiq Khan is so troubling. It's a strange one. Will you be going to see it? Um, oh, I'm washing my hair. You surprised me. Um, it is coming up to 29 minutes after 10. Alex, thank you. The, the, the yellow bikini merits a little bit of explanation. Are some people genuinely confused by why this balloon of Sadiq Khan features him wearing a, a yellow bikini? The reason is that Beach Body Ready advert that he banned shortly after becoming mayor. This was a, an advert that featured a woman in a yellow bikini and suggested that unless you had a body like hers, which was, you know, a, a model's body, possibly airbrushed, I'm not sure, but very much... Um, extraordinary in its in its svelteness and uh, and depiction and the suggestion in the advert was that unless you had a body like hers then you were not ready for the beach so I, I think it was flogging a was it a gym or a diet supplement or something like that anyway so he banned it and what Islamophobic people do or so-called alt-right commentators they pretend that they think he did it um, as some sort of covering up women based decision they, they don't mention to their sort of sheep like followers that adverts featuring lingerie and, and models in bikinis uh, proliferate on the London transport system, but none of those adverts are telling women that unless they look like this, they shouldn't go to the beach. So it was a body-shaming issue, which very deliberately and quite cleverly, I suppose, if that's the right word to use, some, some of these um, far-right and alt-right commentators who, who are enjoying a, a, a bit of a heyday at the moment, they pretend... And they tell their followers that he did it because he's a Muslim and he wants women to cover up, you see. It's a barefaced lie, which the people telling it know, but an awful lot of people listening to it don't realise that it's a barefaced lie. So that's why he's wearing a yellow bikini, because he doesn't think that adverts on the London Underground should tell women that they're not allowed on the beach unless they look like a supermodel. That's really funny, actually, when you come to think of it. I'm wallowing around in the shallow end of the political pool for the first hour this morning, minded to dive headfirst into the deepest um, of political issues after 11 o'clock. I, I mentioned to you earlier in the week when we talked about Jeremy Corbyn that I don't know why, I, I, I kind of find myself... It's possibly a degree of masochism, do you think? The, the conversations that really aren't going to lend themselves to peace and harmony are the ones that I find myself most inexorably drawn to. But but Benjamin Netanyahu's office in Israel has issued a, a series of tweets that I, I find unbelievable in their, well, dangerousness and obnoxiousness. Um, it, 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 and it is relevant.
to point out that actual Nazis are on the march in Germany again, and the Prime Minister of Israel has essentially tweeted about the destruction of weak people. And I will ask you, hopefully, to explain it to me in a way that makes me less alarmed after 11 o'clock. And I mean it. When I read you the full quote, the full tweet, I don't think you'll believe me. I think you'll think that I've been hacked or I've been misled or I've read something odd, and it's come out of the office of the Prime Minister of Israel. And, of course, it is also something that unfolds against the backdrop of people claiming very loudly and widely that you can't criticise the Prime Minister of Israel without being called anti-Semitic. Well, I will be criticising the Prime Minister of Israel very, very, very robustly after 11 o'clock this morning. Um, I think what he's tweeted is disgusting and despicable. Slight caveat that I may not understand it. I've established the context. I've read the tweets that precede it and which succeed it. But it's, it's, it, we all make mistakes. But I, I will be testing that um, claim that you can't criticise the Prime Minister of Israel without being called anti-Semitic because what he's done is absolutely disgusting. And I will also be pointing out that it happens on a world stage upon which Nazis are once again on the march in Germany. Um, and you, hopefully, will tell me why I should calm down and, uh, and not be quite so alarmed. But before that, why? What, what's happened to all the people that were going to be outraged by the Sadiq Khan balloon? It's going up tomorrow. It's cost tens of thousands of pounds. It's, it's, it's not very funny because whoever made it has completely misunderstood that advert featuring the yellow bikini. Possibly misunderstood. Possibly buying into the deliberate deception. And all of the people who told me that, that it would be absolute carnage, if you pardon the pun, if the boot was on the other foot, um, are now even angrier that no one on the other, quote, side is angry. Uh, and I just want to unpick the psychology of that curious position. Is it just, I know you are, but what am I? People can't believe that, that the rest of the world isn't as thin-skinned and as bigoted as they are. I don't know. Uh, Evan does. He's in Slough. Evan, what's going on? Uh, hi, James. Um, as you said, um, the Trump limp is amusing because uh, Trump, Trump is essentially a big brat. The Sadiq Khan blimp just doesn't have that meaning. I mean, to clarify it, there was an excellent episode on Netflix called Explained, which covers political correctness. Oh, yes. And it, end, it ends with this remark, a really good remark. It basically says, for some people, political correctness simply, simply makes them feel like change is happening. I thought it was really good. For me, you know, PC is about, is about political responsibility, but it's really true that it does smooth the wheels of social progress. So in the context of, of you know, the blimp, it just, just doesn't have meaning. I just don't think Trump supporters get that. Well, I, I, I'm not sure I do either. I, I'm, I'd like you consider political correctness to be, to be something that, that oils the wheels of decency and civilization. But I also understand why some people bridle and balk at being told that what has been normal for decades is suddenly not normal anymore. There's a, there's a, a degree of sympathy for that, for the brusqueness of that lesson occasionally. But they, they looked at that Trump balloon. They felt their blood vessels bursting. And they were absolutely certain, and I think we can probably conclude that, that none of them will be calling me today, but they were absolutely certain that if, 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 well, you'd never be allowed to do a Sadiq Khan one, well, they're doing it, and if you did, everyone would go mad, and they're not. So how do you think they process this? I mean, in their minds, what's are we all pretending not to be offended, and we actually all secretly are? Is that how they process it, do you think? I, I have no idea. It'd be really interesting to hear a caller who, you know, and they could actually explain that. What you know, what the feelings are. Yes, well, the phone lines are open. Um, and, and anyone who is offended as well, just to kind of prove me wrong, someone who, who is, I'm a big Sadiq Khan fan, I can't believe they've done this. I think it's really disgusting and despicable. 0345 606 I'm going to get my drone and I'm going to fly it into that Sadiq Khan balloon. It, it's, it's shaming. Reese is in Watford. Reese, what would you like to say? Hello, James. Hello, Good Reece. to speak to you. Likewise. I'm, t I'm saying, you know, a few, a few, it was like a, month, a couple of months ago when this, when this whole aff our affair with the Trump balloon was going on, mm. listening to some of the calls on, on some of the programmes on, on this radio, listening to some of these people get apoplectic about this. It, it, I, I was shocked. I mean, genuinely shocked. In yeah. a funny way. I mean, because I, I did laugh. I'm not going to lie to you. I but bewildered. I, it, bewildered, but, but amused. It, it, I, I still don't really understand what they were so cross about. Do you? Well, no, well, I think it is almost just a real sense of thin skin because they don't like the fact that their, their man is being, being mocked. And they... but, but these are the people who spend their lives saying that you can't give offence, you can only take it, that, that people get offended too easily, that political correctness means you can't mock people anymore. They're, I mean, they're, they're the same people, Reese. Yeah, glass houses, you know what they say about glass houses? I guess so, but I, 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 I mean... 
And the thing is, you, you know what really absolutely offended me, or did offend me, the oh. way so many of these people call, who were calling up kept referencing World War II, uh, how Amer uh, America's role um, being, our, being our ally and World War II. The amount of people who kept mentioning it, the kind of hijacking patriotism is... I'm saying, guys, it's a balloon. Yes, but these are the same people that cheered Boris Johnson when he referred to... Barack Obama's colonial heritage and him being part Kenyan. So it wasn't the office of the American president that they were... Again, I find myself even more confused. Those are the sort of same people who were joining in with Donald Trump's questioning the very birth of Barack Obama are suddenly great defenders of the office of the American president when we put a balloon of Donald Trump in the sky. Are we going to sit here all day trying to work it out and just, just fail, Reese? I, I, I mean, I think some of the answers might be... More similar, I think that there will be ugly answers. Maybe it's just the fact that, yeah, th I mean, there could be it was an explanation, but I think it it'd be a very depressing explanation. Well, go on, don't mind, don't mind me. We're all grown ups here. I think these people are just a bunch of rotten racists. Well, that is kind of where one ends up inevitably being drawn. But people can challenge that. So I'm not racist at all. I, I thought the Donald Trump balloon was disgusting and the Sadiq Khan balloon is actually outraging lefties and libtards all over the country. They're just too busy to ring in and say so, maybe? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Genuinely offended by this balloon in a way that even comes close to the level about fury that greeted the Trump one. Um, and I'm glad we kept those calls, because I don't think you would have believed me if I'd said to you that three weeks ago or a month ago, whenever it was, people were going absolutely bonkers about a balloon. You'd go, no, they weren't. They've got more important things to worry about, like Brexit. So, no, I promise you they were. So that's why we kept them. Marty's in Belfast. Marty, what can you tell us? Uh, James, I'm surprised a man of your intelligence can't work this out. The reason that these people are there is because they are absolute spacers. They're not cases. These people that were on harping on about how disgusting it is to have this blimp on the uh, the, the, the president, they, they really need to be locked up in padded cells. Well, I, that's, I, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the with the with the mental health illusions. Although I know your your tongue is very very firmly in your sheet in your cheek, it doesn't help me understand them though. For you to say that they are to coin it, did you say spacers? Yeah. I haven't heard that phrase before. I, 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 my new insult is balloon, actually, but I can't use that one today because it will get too confusing. And I like the way the Scots sometimes say, you, you absolute balloon, but that would yeah. really confuse the issue today. I, I, I do I want to understand the psychology. It's not good enough for you to simply say they, they, their psychology is broken. They must be in their own heads. What do you think they're coming up with now to answer well, the geez, question I that they haven't got the guts to ring in and answer? I don't think a man of your intelligence will ever be able to understand it. Why not? Because, because you're intelligent. That's what I'm saying. There, there, there's got to be something wrong with these people in, in their mental well-being, mental health. I, I just well, I, 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 yeah, I, no, I mean, you're allowed to say that. It, it, and I suppose the rotten racists or, 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 or just simply, you know, psychologically unwell, uh, these are theories that merit examination. But I don't know that the people we're describing would thank us for either of them. Perhaps they'll ring in and tell us. 03456060973 is the number that you need. Khan balloonists spent ages calling the Trump blimp pathetic and childish and disrespectful. And now they're all, well, we're going to do it too. Yarboo sucks. And then, writes Phil, they're confused that people who weren't offended the first time aren't offended this time either. That, that's it, isn't it? It's people who thought the first one was funny and this one is... I think I misused the word ambivalent earlier, or, or possibly that was on Twitter. When I, what was the word I should have used? Ambivalent doesn't mean the, the same as sort of utterly un, unmoved. I don't, is it apathetic? No, it's not that. I'll double check for you. But the, that's the point, isn't it? it you, I mean, there are two positions you can adopt here. Absolutely furious about the Trump one and confused about why no one's furious about the Khan one. Mike's in where? Mike, what can you tell us? Mike? Not there. But I think Mike was the, was the only one that was going to talk to us about, wasn't he? About why... He was offended by the Trump balloon. Never mind. Gareth's in Chesham. Gareth, what would you like to say? Well, I mean, I read James Comey's book um, when he, he documents all of his meetings with Donald Trump. <laughs> Just pause for a minute, will you? Let me have a little chuckle. So, Gareth in Chesham, why do you think racists thought 
other people will get cross about the Sadiq Khan balloon and they haven't. And my contributor, and I love you for it, Gareth, weighs straight in with, well, I've read James Comey's book and I, and I can't wait to hear where this is going to go next. OK, well, no, because it makes sense. I mean, so, uh, so in, in his book, he talks about the fact that in all of his meetings and all of his, his encounters with Donald Trump, the man doesn't laugh mm. at all which he found extremely sinister. He said, you know, because he, in, in, he said in, in the highest offices and the highest um, echelons of government, laughter is a very important thing for putting people at ease and oh, yes. making people feel comfortable. Um, and especially, you know, in, in the worst situations, normally a, a joke is a thing that, that actually sort of focuses the mind and everything else. And, and he said that Donald Trump never laughs. You know, he's never seen him laugh at anything other than that something that is a little bit puerile or a little bit mean as well. He, he I, doesn't laugh in a genuine way. You, I could imagine him laughing at people getting hurt. Yes, you can imagine. This, this, and this is the thing. Because you can do that, this, this guy has no sense of, sense of humour in, in any sort of a sophisticated way. There's no irony in there. there and, and whereas, so he can, you immediately sort of think, yeah, he's... I mean, first of all, he will have, he will have put up with with racist abuse all his life mm. because just just for you know as a fact of a fact of life it's a very sad fact of life in this country so he will have had a lot worse than, than this in a way it's a bit like you know when if somebody does something at a stag do and it's sort of it's a little bit pure and you go and you'll go oh that's that's fun you know that's fun but there's no there's no offense caused it's a bit of fun poking and it's absolutely in line with the, sort of the british sense of humor spitting image and satire and everything else but it's a good point, that, that actually, that. The, the, because the, the claim that it somehow demeaned the office, you'd have to then extend that to when Spitting Image was taking the mickey out of Ronald Reagan, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course, but, but, but the whole reason that it's funny is because the subject is so utterly humorless and takes himself so desperately seriously and wants everyone else to do so as well. That's why it's funny. And, and, and yeah, and, I mean, so there is an element of I know you are, but what am I to this? Which is, and I, get, I find this from extremists of every hue, actually, on, on both ends of the horseshoe, as it were. They think that secretly everybody is actually like them. So, uh, I, and I know people won't thank me for this, but, but the very, very hardcore of Jeremy Corbyn's support think that secretly everybody like me does agree with them but can't say so in public because of the Israel lobby. And then you go to the other extreme of British politics and everybody actually secretly does agree with um, Donald Trump and, and those kind of characters about immigrants and Muslims and all those sort of things, but they're too frightened to say so in public because of political correctness. So there is this weird psychological condition where some of the nastiest people in our population think that everybody else is secretly as nasty as they are. And perhaps this massive miscalculation of the balloon kind of proves it. Indeed. <laughs> I don't think you were waiting it to come back then. It's 10.47, actually, you shouldn't have done. If people want to spend their Saturdays looking at a balloon of me, that's fine, says the Mayor of London, but I don't really think that yellow is my colour. Here's a tweet that um, highlights that thing that I described to you about the yellow bikini. Some people wondering why this blimp of Sadiq Khan features a yellow bikini. This is from Callum. He says, falsely accusing people of being racists while also supporting the illiberal policy of Sadiq Khan to censor an ad because it shows an attractive woman. Stop pretending to be a liberal. James, you give actual liberals a bad name. Um, man, so much stupid in one tweet. Because as we've established, the advert was banned because it sent a message to women that if they didn't have bodies like a supermodel they had no business being on a beach i don't know where you live callum but when you come out of the hole and get onto the tube or the buses or go anywhere in london lingerie adverts and adverts featuring models in bikinis are everywhere but none of them tell women that they have to look like the models do in order to be ready for the beach very very simple but possibly not as simple as you. 10.52 is the time. 03456060973 is the number that you need. The question very simply is this. When people were spluttering incandescently about the Donald Trump blimp, they assured me, they insisted, that if the boot was on the other foot, then there would be outrage from the other, quotes, side. Where is the outrage? Why? Why was that miscalculation so acute? Mike's in where? Mike, what can you tell us? 
Well, I think the the outrage when um, the Trump balloon was flown with uh, Sadiq Khan's permission was purely and simply because the, the balloon was depicting uh, the President of the United States. Now, irrespective of what you or anyone else thinks personally about the President of the United States, the fact of the matter is that he is our biggest ally and consistently over the years, America has been our biggest ally. Um, so just, just, just when Boris Johnson um, accused Barack Obama of, of harbouring ancient hatreds of the English because of his part Kenyan heritage, you must have been really disgusted. I was disgusted, yes. yeah. I was disgusted. But I, that, bet, no, I that bet you were. That, that is a separate issue. And what, what, issue well, no, it's not, because he was the President of the United States no, of America, no, and they are no, historically no. our greatest ally. And that was our foreign secretary. I, I yeah. don't think he was at the and, time. And, and really, really. And hey, I, I, Mike, hang on, mate. Disgusting. Mike, yeah, what, okay. what, what about? I mean, because I mean, I guess if anybody holds the office of the United States president in higher regard than you think we should, it would be Americans, right? So yeah. when when Donald Trump was suggesting that the president of the United States of America had lied about the circumstances of his own birth, that's about yeah. as disgusting as it gets, isn't it? When it comes to insulting yeah. the office. But it didn't diminish his, uh, his uh, support in America, did it? No, mate, but you, you should have been outraged by that because it's an assault upon the office of the President of the United States of America. Think, what, what I'm outraged about... <laughs> you're not outraged about anything, Mike. Come on. I am. Come on, I'm you're a grown-up. I'm, uh, I'm outraged about the lack of respect for the people of this country, or many of the people of this, in this country, for what's going on, for example, with Brexit. I know I'm yes. getting off the topic. You certainly are, Mike, although I suspect people could see it coming. But do you do you do you accept that the the latest figures uh, on on immigration from the Office of National Statistics and Migration? Mike, we're talking about balloons, mate. Just just, just one second. <laughs> Suggest uh, up to eighty five percent of the births and the increase in the population of this country are due to immigrants and the children of immigrants in the in the last fifteen years. You, you mean people like the, Nigel Farage's daughters? No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm... No, yes, because his, because their mum's German. Do you accept the figures? Co completely do. I'm just checking that you do mean people like Nigel Farage's daughters and Boris Johnson as well, of course. He was born in America. Absolutely. So his children are the children of immigrants. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, what's your point then, Mike? You want to deport Nigel Farage's children? I'm I'm talking about the figure. So am I. 85%. And you're telling me, and people like you, try to tell the country Balloon. that it doesn't, it's not having an impact, a negative impact on this country. It's had a negative impact on you, Mike, because you've rung up a radio station to talk about balloons, and, and, and now you've, you've ended up That's maligning right. the children of, of an because LBC like presenter. You, like you, I have the opportunity. That's why... And you're so always going to be welcome, there, but let me steer you speaking. gently, if I may, back to yeah. the balloon. And yeah, your, okay. your, your suggestion that we should never insult American presidents, but it's all right when Donald Trump does it to the last American president. Just unpick that for me, Mike. Well, it doesn't need unpicking. It does, what, mate. What, what Donald Trump <laughs> said was about Barack Obama, OK? And there's so much hypocrisy uh, from uh, Barack Obama. Barack Obama was the man that came, uh, that, that, that basically uh, said to the people of this country, if you leave the European Union, you'll go to the back of the queue. Yes. What a, kind a Don of message did that send? Donald Trump has now confirmed it. OK. Well, I don't So why aren't you so cross with him? Donald Donald Trump will give us a good deal when we leave the, leave the European Union. You know what he's done today? About it. You know what yeah. he's done today, don't you? Tell me what he's done with regard to the World Trade Organization, Mike. What, what has Donald Trump done today with the World Trade Organization? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't read anything about well, it. Well, I mean, what, if, if I, what could I say now that would make you look really, really silly? Probably lots of things. But oh, well, that's true. But the, the, but the biggest one, the, the biggest one of all, the biggest one of all, Donald Trump yeah. has threatened to pull out of the World Trade Organization. That's the place That's the place that Brexiters like you think we're going to be laughing and really well off while getting our brilliant deal with Donald Trump. Mike, be careful. It's 10.57. Patricia's in Coulston. Patricia, what would you like to say? Well, first of all, I laughed like a drain, actually, when I saw the Trump one. 
um, I couldn't see what the indignation was for, and quite frankly... Can you see it now? You just, you just heard from someone who was very, very indignant. Um, do, do, are you any clearer about why people like Mike were so indignant? I've got no idea. No, OK. None at all, because my feeling about Sadiq Khan, he's gone up 100 points in my mind, and I'm a Tory voter. Has he? Why? Well... He didn't, he didn't do it. Oh, you mean his response to it? It's not my colour, but, you know, I don't <laughs> mind. Uh, and quite frankly, I think that shows broad-mindedness that the rest of us ought to copy. Do you think he is secretly seething, as someone suggested to me on social media earlier today, but has now, I noticed, blocked me? Not a chance. But how can we prove it, though? Because that's what they do, these lefties and these libtards. I know you're a Tory voter, so I'm not tarring you with that brush. They would be, se <laughs> they'd be secretly furious and really, really angry and getting out their drones and, and, and spluttering a bit and going all gammony. But actually, they'd be pretending not to care at all. That's well, what they're doing. I think the whole thing is a comic episode. And that these people who get angry about it, quite frankly, they need treatment. Wasn't it astonishing that the, that the last fellow rang in to talk about Sadiq Khan and balloons and ended up shouting about immigration and Brexit? Oh, my God. Who could possibly have seen that coming? Patricia? <laughs> well, you didn't. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. It's coming up to 11 o'clock. I am the real star, star.